June solstice, solar noon, the sun's angle of elevation. These are my informal results. This video is going to have three parts, and I'm going to discuss my results based on the video where I describe how you can measure it for yourself. So this is the uh, video from my channel, uh, June Solstice Observations, um, and you get pretty accurate measurements within a week of the solstice. So the full details and the full mathematics are in that video. I'm just going to cover my results here. So there are three parts to this. First, I'm going to describe the solar clinometer. Then we're actually going to take a reading at solar noon, and then I'm going to compare um, our reading to the globe Earth and then compare it to the flat Earth uh, predictions. So let's talk about the solar clinometer. So it's really easy. You need a plastic protractor, a car piece of cardboard, um, a pencil. You know, that's really the, the basis of it, and the full details are in the other video. But one thing that I'm going to emphasize is that if you have a very steep angle of elevation, uh, you may want to cut a notch in the cardboard. So here uh, is sort of a, a side view of the, the clinometer, and if I just cut a notch, then the, the string can kind of hang freely uh, in that notch. So this is an actual photo. This, this photo was not taken. I, I had not aligned the uh, clinometer yet. I was just showing you the notch. So now we're going to actually take the reading. Um, and I did it not exactly on the solstice, I did it approximately, but you get pretty good results within a, within a couple days or so. So here's the actual photo where I had, I had perfectly aligned the pencil so that it no longer had a shadow. Um, and then I, I used the uh, Google image uh, description and then th this is the actual data behind the, uh, the photo. So you'll notice that this is actually not, not exactly on the solstice. It's actually three days past. And it wasn't exactly at solar noon. It was actually two minutes past. Um, so I ran the numbers. And it turns out that if you compare what would have, what would have happened exactly on solar noon versus uh, two minutes after solar noon a couple days later, uh, the difference is about four hundredths of a degree. So and not, a, not a huge difference. So I, I'm, I'm going to just go with this photo. So let's examine this photo. Um, and I would like you to try to figure out what the protractor reading is. So I'll just give you a few moments. What is the protractor reading to the nearest half degree? Well, let's give you a hint. So we're, we're measuring from the left. So it's 15, 16, 17 degrees. And we're a little bit, uh, you know, pretty close to the halfway of 16 and 17. I would say a little bit more than halfway. but. You know, this isn't this isn't exact. It was actually a piece of dental floss, and um, so I'm going to say it's uh, 16.5 degrees on my protractor. Now, to get the angle of elevation, you simply subtract that from 90. So my angle of elevation was 73.5 degrees. Now we're going to compare our reading to the uh, predictions based on the globe Earth versus the flat Earth. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find out my uh, my latitude. Now, if you don't know your exact latitude, uh, you can go into Google Maps and you can click on a location. So when you click, it actually places a little gray uh, placeholder. And at the bottom of the screen, it actually shows your latitude and longitude. So I'm going to say approximately 40.1 degrees north. Or you can actually use a website such as latlong.net. And they also, they also show it in degrees. Um, uh, I'm sorry. In a decimal, in a decimal format, so they they actually show 40.1 uh, something as well, but they also give it to you in degrees, minutes, and seconds. So if you know your latitude in degrees, minutes, and seconds, you can actually use that as well. So I'm just going to go with uh, 4717, 40 degrees, seven minutes, 17 seconds, north latitude. So again, just to remind you, in the globe Earth model, uh, the North Pole is tilted towards the sun at 23.4 degrees. So that's going to change our angle of elevation of the sun to be 23.4 degrees northward from whatever the reading was going to be on the equinox. Meanwhile, on the flat Earth map, and this is sort of a side view with the North Pole on the left and the uh, tropics on the right, uh, with the sun is above the Tropic of Cancer, and that's going to affect the angle of elevation as well. And to calculate that angle of elevation, you use the arctangent. So there's an online calculator I've created uh, to help you with these, these calculations just to sort of automate the process. Uh, and the link is in the description. And what we're going to do is we're going to go there now, uh, sort of a live demonstration. And I just want to remind you that my observed angle of elevation was 73.5 degrees. Um, and my latitude of my observation was uh, 4717 or 40.1. So let's go there now. 
All right, so here we are in the calculator. And the first thing we want to do is start off with our inputs. Now, you can just type in a decimal uh, degree. So for example, uh, 40.1. I can type in 40.1. It'll run all the calculations. Or I can put it in, in um, degrees, minutes, and seconds. So I had 40, uh, 47, 17, and it'll also make the calculations. So if we now scroll down, there's a couple of intermediate calculations. If we scroll down, we see what the predicted angle of elevation is for solar noon, um, and there's a difference between the globe Earth and the flat Earth. Now you may ask, well, on the flat Earth model, what are the assumptions? So let's uh, scroll over here, and there are a couple assumptions. Um, so one of the assumptions is the, the height of the flat Earth sun, and there's a lot of disagreement about this. So if you uh, consult um, Robotham, he says it's uh, approximately 700 miles in elevation, so you can actually change that, uh, that assumption. Uh, if you talk to Winship or to uh, Voliva, I believe they said the uh, estimate of the uh, the sun was at 3,200 miles, so you can type that in. Uh, I like to use 3,000 miles. It's a nice round number. I sort of rounded 3,200, um, but you know you can play around. You can play around with the number. Now, going back to the uh, prediction, uh, you can actually reverse engineer what the height of the flat Earth sun should be. So, based on your um, your globe, uh, you know the globe prediction, you could say, all right, well the, the flat Earth sun is 3,844. So let's type in 38. 44 and then so now it'll recalculate everything anyway you could just have some fun have some fun with the with the spreadsheet and again the link is in the description so my channel is full of uh, do-it-yourself explorations and experiments and uh, the key here is you know gathering your own gathering your own data making your own careful observations um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of videos online that are basically telling you what to think and I really won't tell you what to think uh, uh, I, I will tell you how to build the tools and how to make the, uh, the measurements yourself, uh, and you're welcome to ignore the analysis portion. Um, but the, 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 the most important thing is that no one can take your data from you. So, so please check out uh, some of the other videos on my channel. And here's a closing thought. Uh, people disagree about a lot of things in the Flat Earth debate. So we, you know, we don't have to d agree on anything to be kind to one another. Thank you.